Um, let's talk about reskilling, not just in the U.S., but around the globe, because according to the World Economic Forum, 54 percent of current employees are going to require some kind of reskilling and upskilling by 2022. Our next guest aims to help them do that. Ashwin Bharat is a Reviture founder and CEO. He's joining us from Reston, Virginia. His company retrains employees, um, particularly in technology. So, Ashwin, what kind of demand are you seeing, particularly because not just Right now, are we talking about current employees that need to be reskilled and upskilled? But of course, a lot of people who are unemployed as well, who are, perhaps need to be upskilled or reskilled to then re-enter the workforce. So, Julie, thanks a lot for um, having us here. And uh, so, before I answer that question, let me give you a quick brief overview on what is reskilling and what is upskilling. Right. So, uh, there are both are trying to solve the skill gap issue. Right. And there are two factors that cause the skill gap. The factor one is uh, like the technology change and digital transformation. That is solved by upskilling. You take an existing workforce, upskill them into the newer skill, and that solves the upskilling uh, is, uh, thing. And the second factor is forced skill gap, which is COVID, what's happening now. So COVID is causing a much more bigger problem, which is like unemployment, furlough, displaced workforce, and that can be solved by reskilling by taking um, like, uh, like a workforce from a different domain and identifying them to be a good programmer and doing that, right? So these are the two things that we are trying to achieve. And the problem, as you said, is it is quite big, especially in COVID, companies are trying to do more with less. And that's possible with technology adaptation. 87% of, according to McKinsey, 87% of CEOs believe they have a skill gap issue and they need to upskill their people but only 50% or less have plans for it. To me, the opportunity is massive. If you don't do it, it is going to become one of the top priorities and problems for CEOs in the future. But why is that perhaps a better route for a company, a more uh, efficient, less expensive route than say hiring people who already possess the skill if those people are available? So um, the, the, to begin with, at least in the tech industry, uh, these people are first not available, right? I will give you a little bit of experience. Uh, when I came from India, I was hired, my first job, I was hired based on my aptitude, not based on my prior programming skills. But I was in a shock when I came here. That is not happening. You have a plenty of alternate supply chain of talent in US who could be great programmers. If you think about Revature, what we do is, like we don't look for prior programming skills, but rather we try to hire people uh, based on their aptitude and attitude train them and make them into great programmers. So that is some of the things, if you don't do that, a lot of these jobs that are available now can be gone forever. Just taking a look at Reviture and some of the programs that you offer and some of your partners, what are the types of positions that are most in demand? I mean, is it cloud engineering, uh, certain lanes of software engineering? Where, where is that demand actually coming in? So the, the, the biggest demand, I would say, is uh, full stack engineers. That's where you see the biggest demand. But what COVID did is in a post-COVID thing, what Revature is experiencing is we are seeing uh, like a 550% or more than five times the demand for cloud and cybersecurity. So the demand for cybersecurity and cloud is on steroids in a post-COVID environment, right? And having said that, like we are partnering with great institutions, for example, Salesforce. So we are partnering with them uh, potentially to create 100,000 Salesforce engineers to be added into the, the talent ecosystem, right? We're partnering with companies like Accenture. We're partnering with companies like Infosys. And even we are partnering with state governments, like, for example, the Rhode Island. So these are some of the partners that we are working with now. Ashwin, thank you very much. Ashwin Bharat is Reviture founder and CEO.